watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. on the line in this game. Whoever wins this is probably going to win the conference. They're a rival, they're homestead, and there's always fuel to the fire. We're friends off the field, but on the field we don't like each other. It always eats back at you thinking about, you know, section knows how close we were. Play fast on the offensive side, you know, and get as many plays in as we can. Score as fast as you can. You know, our kids, are, they know who they're playing, and they know the situation conference, and they know we have to focus and play like this is the state championship. It is SAC Rivalry Week. Good matchups up and down this conference, but only one where both teams can still smell the bell. Carroll and Homestead both with a very real chance to ring the SAC's victory bell at season's end. And our man Colton Howard joins us now with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Colton. Yeah, Glenn, if you remember last year, Homestead was double trouble for the Chargers. The Spartans beating Carroll in the regular season are on their way to their first ever SAC championship. Homestead then ending Carroll's season in the playoffs, beating them in the sectional title game. Carroll at Homestead, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. <laughs> Would it be redemption time for Carroll? The Chargers ranked ninth in this week's 6A state poll. Homestead, 11. We join this game in the second quarter. Homestead leading 28-21. Hand off to Braden Hardwick. And he's gone. He's back. He's making moves for it. Makes a break down the sideline, and no one's going to catch him. 71 yards through the house for the touchdown. 286 yards rushing for Hardwick. Two touchdowns. Spartans lead by 14. Carroll down, but not out. Third quarter, Jeff Becker finds Jamison Coverstone. Inside the red zone, Coverstone cuts across the plane and it's a one touchdown ball game. Next drive, Ormsby unloading, airs this ball deep to Jared Kissler for the 47 yard touchdown and Homestead back on top, 49-35. Carroll pressing again in the goal line. Once again, third quarter, hand off to Hunter Mertz for the two yard Carroll touchdown. Runs the score 49-41 after a two point try was no bueno. Next drive, Homestead airing it deep again. This time, Ormsby to Nate Anderson. That's an 81-yard touchdown, and a lot of records broken for the Spartans. Total yards, yards passing, most touchdowns in the game, rushing yards in the game, just to name a few. And Homestead wins 70-41. to It was crazy. Um, we all kind of gathered together and we kind of stepped it up an extra notch and I think we finally had that one moment where everything clicked. Uh, our whole offense stepped it up. We knew that Carroll was a big game and we all just kind of wanted to set something and show that we can put up 70 points in a game. It was huge. Carroll's a really good team and we don't like him very much so coming out here and putting 70 on him it was great. Tonight was the biggest game for the, for the Bell. Uh, Carroll's one of the best teams we'll see in the conference, so coming out and beating them was definitely like, very important. 70 points! What a way to make a statement. Next up, Homestead is at Wayne next Friday while Carroll hosts Concordia. Glenn, back to you. Yeah, Homestead's got Wayne and Southside left, so they're thinking Bell all the way. Now they were ready to rock at Lures Field, not only the Battle of the Bishops, but a game Dwinger had to win against an improving Lures team to stay in the SEC title race. Fourth and four on the 11 in the first quarter. Devin Chipman says, give me all 11 of them. It's a touchdown, 7-0 on that, yeah, fourth down try. Dwinger in the lead. How about Sir Hale? Can you get the ball to him, sir? Yes, sir. Sir Hale, the speedy junior, turns the Jets upfield. He is gone for a touchdown from Carson Clark. And that's 57 yards on the score. PAT blocked, though, so it's a 7-6 Saints lead. Second quarter, Devin Tippin doing what Devin Tippin does. He had 13 carries, 162 yards, three touchdowns. Dwenger wins the Battle of the Bishops, 43-6 at Lures. Spooler Stadium oh, Supremacy line, on the line the here, north of right Snyder. Both teams Denver, coming in Florida. three and three. A lot of people counting out the Panthers, but man, this team has improved a lot since the early going in the season. 23 zip Snyder at half, opening kick of the second half. That's Tavarius Easley Jones taking it back for a touchdown, 82 yards, 30 zip Snyder, and that touchdown is Russ Isaacs approved. Always good to see Coach Ike on the sidelines. Hey, the Snyder defense, he'd like this too. Ison Robinson tips it. Lamarion Bailey with the pick. He would take it all the way back into the north. 20-yard line is where he would take it back to. And then it's Luke Holpert doing work at quarterback. Hits Tyler Dent. 
He finds the end zone and Snyder with a statement win. They beat the Bruins 34-0 at Spooler. Great tradition at Chambers Field, the annual totem pole game. We're talking 95th time that Southside and Northside have played. And this one, it was all Northside. Second quarter, Deuce Taylor to the freshman, Bronte Johnson. Tay dropped around the 10-yard line as Northside already led 7-zip. Then it's Taylor to Jay Sean Lambert. Lambert in for the touchdown. It's 14-0 for Mike Brevard's club. How about some defense? Austin Chapman. Yeah, doing some work on the D. They will punt it away. Will the Archers? And then, well, you just give the ball back to Mr. Taylor. He had six passing touchdowns to Deuce Taylor. This one to fellow senior Arian McCarter. It's a good grab as Northside wins the totem pole matchup 49 to 6. Last stop for SAC Rivalry Week, the classic, classic rivalry matchup, the granddaddy of them all, Wayne and Concordia. Oh, well, this is third quarter action, I should say. Brandon Davis, uh, it's enough for the first down on the QB keeper. The Cadets led 13 to 8 again, that's in the third. And then Davis hands it to Cam Johnson, the jack of all trades. Cam Johnson goes 45 yards for the touchdown. He had three total TDs in this game. The Cadets lead 20 to 8. Aiden Meek for Wayne, looking and finding Jamari Tab. He is forced out right around the 15-yard line. It leads to a Chris Thomas touchdown, but Wayne falls in this one to the Cadets, 27 to 16. Touchdown Week seven in the books for the SAC, but coming up, we're heading all across Northeast Indiana and more. Columbia City looking to stay perfect as the Eagles fly their way up to Kendallville. We're going to head all the way down to Jay County to see the new number one ranked team in 1A. We're talking the Starfires of South Adams as they take the show on the road. And the W Trophy up for grabs as Warsaw and Walvesey square off. All that and much, much more. 13 games coming your way next in the zone. Well, they were streaking up in Kendallville tonight. Uh, I could have said that better. By, by that, I mean both teams were on separate streaks of their own. Columbia City, a winning streak. Eagles 6-0 to start this season. East Noble, a rare losing streak. Knights had dropped three straight for the first time since 2001. To so Kendallville we go. Columbia City ranked 10th in the 4A state poll this week. First quarter, it's Greg Bolt. Now, he is a junior, and he's already Columbia City's leader in uh, career touchdown passes and passing yards, but he can run the football as well. Look at Bolt making like Usain Bolt for the rushing touchdown. 7-zip Eagles. Second quarter, it's 10-zip now, but this is when East Noble gets on the board. Justin Marcellus is in. It's 10-7, and later in the second, you'll see Marcellus do it again as the Knights rally to win this one. East Noble victorious. 27 to 10 over the Eagles. Columbia City, yeah, they're going to be at Leo next week. And speak of the devil, here are those Lions. Leo hosting Huntington North. Second quarter, no score. Jackson Barber pushes it in. The QB feeling strong with the touchdown. It's 7-0 Purple Pride. Later in the second, Ethan Crawford breaking loose. And Ethan Crawford, well, he was hoping to find pay dirt. He gets it down to about the two-yard line. Later on the drive, you're going to see Max Leffler, a real balanced attack from Leo tonight as the Lions win a 21-zip over the visiting Vikings. Down at the courtyard, the Knights riding high as Norwell, a comeback win at East Noble last week. For that, they were named your Ops Team of the Week. Third quarter, it's Eli Riley to Luke Graff. It's 43-0, Norwell in the third. Norwell, the offense has really started to come alive the last few weeks, but the defense is, is what Gerber and this team is known for. Head coach Josh Gerber, I'm talking about Isaiah Breggy with the interception. Norwell, a shutout, 50 to nothing over the Barons of DeKalb. The Montebell at the Haven of New. Braves and Bulldogs on the turf at John Young Stadium, and the New Haven offense is feeling its oats early on. Jarrell Jackson with the touchdown to make it six zip New Haven. Later in the first quarter, it's Jakar Williams to Jalen Carpenter for the touchdown. Williams was 10 of 16 for 182 yards, three passing TDs. It was 14 to zip at that point. Now 20-0 in the second quarter. Williams 
It's a carpenter, it's a good combination. New Haven rolls 43-6 over Belmont. ACAC, South Adams, the new number one this week in the 1A state poll. The undefeated Starfires at 0-6 Jay County. First quarter, they get to work early. It's Mr. James Arnold to Mr. Drew Stutzman. It's a touchdown. One of the best combinations in Northeast Indiana. Seven zip Starfires, it's so good. They decide to do it again, and they decide to do it again in the first quarter. Arnold to Stutzman. It's a touchdown as South Adams goes to Jay County, and well, they do what the Starfires do. It's 55-0. South Adams still undefeated. Lofton came in just a game behind South Adams in the conference standings. The Tigers hosting Heritage, and we picked this one up in the first quarter. The quarterback, Hayden Nern, kind of a dual-threat quarterback. He uses the wheels here in for the touchdown, and it's 7-0 Bluffton. But in the second quarter, Heritage, no give up. Watch Chris Baker to Keel Eldridge, the big junior, hauling it in at the goal line for a touchdown. That knots it at seven, but Nern, we mentioned, really versatile with the arm, with the legs. Again, you're gonna see him scoot in for a touchdown. He goes 60 yards on this play as Bluffton wins this one, 49-21 over Heritage. Adam County getting resourceful this week. The Jets uh, adding a game with Twin Lakes on Monday. The Jets four and two Twin Lakes, not shabby at all. Four and one coming in. This is Blake Hirely and like Hirely's donuts, he rises to the top. It's a touchdown. 33-17 AC in the third. How about, uh, you know, this Twin Lakes team, I bet you they're pretty good. Lewis Dellinger hits Noah Johnston. That's a nice little pitch and catch right there. But you'll see Nick Newenflander of Adams Central plunge into the end zone with a touchdown run for the Fighting Jets here. And AC wins at the landing strip, 47-29. NECC Big Division, a big game actually. Garrett and Fairfield both 2-0 in Big Division play. Coming in, they were having fun up in Fairfield. This is third quarter action, Colin Cope. Nice to see him healthy this season. He gets the touchdown. That gets Garrett on the board, but they're down 28-7 in the fourth quarter. You're gonna see Fairfield's Corey Lance rush for the short touchdown. Fairfield, I'm gonna juggernaut this season. Matt Packers team wins it 36-7. Eastside ranked fourth in the latest 2A state poll. The Blazers were, they were supposed to play Fremont, but with a, a quarantine in effect, Eastside quickly finding a new opponent in the Concord Minutemen. Blazers up 14 in this one. That's Matt Firestein with the first down, but Eastside would miss the field goal on that drive. It opens the door for Concord. Hunter Dutton to Jack Darcy. This is a touchdown. It would go to overtime, and Eastside falls for the first time this season, 21-14 in OT. Well, like Eastside Angola playing outside the conference tonight, the Hornets making the trip to South Bend Clay. First quarter action, Angola football. You think quarterback Tucker Hasselman, Tucker Hasselman has it? He doesn't. That's because he gave it to Tyler Call, and Call can ball the long touchdown run for the Hornets. They run all over South Bend Clay tonight. 49-0 Angola. In the Northern Lakes Conference, the W Trophy. You gotta love it. On the line is Warsaw making the short drive to face Wallace. First quarter, Warsaw's Juan Aramillo with a touchdown plunge for the Tigers as the striped ones up 7-0 on Wallace. But Wallace Root working through the air. This is Parker Young to Adam Beer. And it's a beautiful grab to get the foot in, have the concentration, and haul in a touchdown catch. It's 7-7. But in the second quarter, you're going to see Aaron Green score for the Tigers as Warsaw wins this one at 42-17. Three Rivers Conference. This one a showdown at Southwood. The Knights 4-0 in conference. Peru 4-1. Southwood doesn't wait too long to get on the board. Alex Farr to Carson Rich. It's a touchdown. 6-0 Knights. Later, it's Zachary Johnson for the Peru Bengal Tigers. Punting one through. That is a field goal, and that is a 6-3 ball game. But in the second quarter, Alex Farr settling in, finds Logan Barley for a touchdown. It's 14 yards on the score. Southwood continues to impress. They win 36-17. Final stop, how about Manchester High School? Alex Brandewey and the Squires hosting Whitco, and this was Whitco's night. However, on this play, it's Manchester playing some D. It's 14-7 in the third when Blake Kohler for the Squires comes up with the nice interception in traffic. However, in the fourth, Bill Jensen Oh, you know he's got this program headed in the right direction, at least for Whitco Wildcat fans. Isaiah Kyles with the touchdown run for Whitco. Whitco a winner at Manchester, 
2014 more Highlight Zone after the break. Welcome to Bluffton High School. Stay tuned for more Highlight Zone. Well, last week it was rumbling, stumbling, 74-yard fumble returned for a touchdown by the big man from Dwanger, future IU Hoosier, Vinny Fia Cable. Can we beat a lineman running it back for a touchdown? Well, we're going to try as we present you with your Week 7 gem of the night. It's courtesy of our buddies, Peter Franklin Jewelers, and the honor, we got to go back up to Wallace. Uh, yeah, I know Wallace lost the W Trophy game. I know Warsaw won 42-17, but my goodness, what an amazing catch by Adam Beer from Parker Young. Take another look at it. The great concentration with the hands, got the left foot in. That's a touchdown, and that is your Peter Franklin Jr. Week 7 Play of the Week right here on the Highlight Zone. It's just as pretty in real time as it is in slow-mo. Great catch by Adam Beer. Hey, key games for next Friday night. It's already week eight. How did we get here? Well, uh, we got some good ones. Concordia is at Carroll. Snyder is at Bishop Dwanger. Homestead is at Wayne. Again, Homestead has Wayne and Southside left on the schedule. They are in the driver's seat as far as the SAC title goes. Also, Leo is at Columbia City. And Eastside is at Central Noble. Of course, Eastside looking real good as far as the NECC small division standings go. That will be a key game as far as the Blazers season goes. Of course, we'll be back next Friday night right here on the Highlight Zone for Colton Howard. I'm Glenn Marini, and we'll see you in week eight right here on The Zone on Wayne TV, the Fort Wayne's longest running and most watched sports show, The Highlight Zone. See you next Friday.